I'm Dave, and for the last couple of years I've been touring Scotland in my camper van, climbing mountains, kayaking lochs, and exploring the history and nature of this beautiful country. In normal times I would be operating tours to share the experience. However, due to the pandemic, 2020 has certainly been different. Once the lockdown ended, I've spent most of my time with friends and have done very little filming. This video is going to show what I've been up to in between someone eating a bat and the present day. I hope it inspires you to go and explore new places and take full advantage of Scotland's beauty. It was early March and a perfect winter's day and I was out climbing Loch Nagar in the heart of the Cairngorms with a friend. Little did I know that this would be the last mountain I would climb for some time as within a week or two, we entered lockdown. When the restrictions eased, I headed to see family on the west coast of Scotland in Morar and Arasig. I felt really lucky to be able to have somewhere like this to recharge after months of doing the same routine. Once the travel restrictions ended, I had some memorable trips with friends and visited new places. For most of these trips, I didn't really bother to bring any camera gear as I wanted to just enjoy time with friends and not be stuck in trying to create content. One of my trips was with my friend Kia, who had recently returned from Australia. We ended up doing most of the North Coast 500. The start of our journey seen us passing Ullapool and looking at the impressive Anshelach. Whilst I was tempted to climb this the next morning, I made the decision that we would instead climb Sylvan. We reached Loch Inver pretty late that night, had a quick beer and then we tried to sleep. After a couple hours it was apparent I wasn't getting any sleep, so I decided that we would get up and try and watch the sunrise on Sylvan. We left the car around 4am. As the sun came above Canisp, we were just approaching the Bilac on Sylvan. We encountered broken spectres and a cloud inversion. It was a pretty spectacular day. The next part of the trip seen us going to the impressive Dunnet Head, the most northerly point in Scotland.
We checked out Wailing Widow Falls in Ascent. We watched Surfers at Betty Hill. We spent a day at Loch Morlick, which has the UK's highest beach. The following week I would be heading up to Torridon to climb a mountain. Leothach, one of the big hills in the Torridon area. It's a thousand and fifty-five metres high. It's one of the big three alongside Ben Alligan and Ben A. We arrived at the start of the ridge before sunrise. We watched the sun come up and then began the traverse. Seven in the morning, just climbed to the top of the south summit of Leotak, just about to start the, the full traverse behind me. Um, I've also got Ben Alligan, over there is Benny. Care needs to be taken on Leothach. It is one of those places that you get a lot of exposure, there's pinnacles and you need to be careful, it's a big drop. As I drove north, I stopped at the King's House to watch the mountain rescue helicopter. The roads were packed, so I decided to try and get away from the crowds, and I took the Corran ferry to Ardnamurkin. Just on the Corran ferry, heading towards Ardnamurkin. Might go to Mull, I'm still deciding what I should do. It's a long weekend. Weather's been a bit mixed so far, um, but yeah, I'll just show you. I'm not just about to land on the Arnhemark Peninsula now. Sun's just about to go down, bit of a race to get here. Uh, this is one of the most westerly points in the UK. It's, um, I think the lighthouse at Arnhem Arkham is actually the most westerly point. It's pretty cold just now, it's like 10 degrees. Um, but yeah, this is, uh, this is one of the best beaches. Definitely one of the nicest of the mainland. Just give you a quick panorama around it. So I think I'm going to call it a day at that. The sunset's not really, not really happened that great. It was nice to see it go down, but not really much magic at the end. So I'm going to head back to the van, make myself something to eat, find a place to sleep, um, and then 
see what happens in the morning. That night, I got a notification on an app, Aurora Watch. It said the northern lights may be visible from Scotland uh, by the naked eye. I took a walk up to the lighthouse and I could see the northern lights clearly. So I got the camera out and took some pictures. Just woke up at the Arnhemarken lighthouse. Last night it was really good. The northern lights came out. It's really cold. The wind's just whipping in. I'm just staring across right now to rum and egg. So I think my plan for the rest of the day is I'm going to get the ferry over to Mull. I've never been to Mull, so I'm going to go see what, what Mull has to offer. Hopefully um, get out to Staffa Island and uh, Fingal's Cave. That was kind of the plan. But yeah. Uh, Welcome to the colourful Tobermory. This town's famous for being in the, the show Balamori. This was the setting they used, the local town. Pretty lucky with the weather today. Um, so I'm just going to explore the Isle of Mull. Just had some food there, it was really good. And yeah, just going to see, see where the day goes. I highly recommend a visit to Tobermory. You can get some really fresh seafood and local Scottish cuisine. After leaving the town, I headed along the coastal route towards Calgary. Calgary is a hamlet on the northwest coast of Mull, and it's actually the origin of the city in Canada. That's where it got its name from. I stopped off briefly at Calgary Bay, which boasts an incredible beach. I kept driving along the coast towards Finneport, where I would take the ferry to Iona. The scenery was truly spectacular. It was a brilliant day. Decided to stop here for some lunch. Um, over behind me is Ben Moore, which literally means Big Hill in Gaelic. Um, just gonna have some lunch here. Um, but yeah, the weather's cracking today. Um, just been driving around. I think I'm gonna try to make it to the Isle of Iona. Um, so yeah, just seeing how things go. But yeah, cracking day. Show you some of the views. I took a boat trip with Staffa Tours to the island of Staffa and to Fingal's Cave.
Morning. Um, I'm on Staffa Island. So Staffa is famous for having Fingal's Cave on it. One of the things I've really enjoyed about Mull is just the peace and quiet and how few people there are here um, compared to the likes of Sky and stuff, it's just so much better. Such a nice day, just such a beautiful place. Mull really has been such an incredible place. The island's really beautiful and it's a lot quieter than the lights of sky. Um, when I was driving up I could see that the mainland was really busy and I wanted to escape the crowds this weekend. And that's what I've done and it's, it's been great. Uh, a ton of wildlife as well, uh, really surprised me. Seen quite a few otters, loads of deer, sheep, goats, uh, tons of eagles as well, or hawks, birds of prey. Um, I know Mull's also quite famous for uh, sightings of sea eagles, uh, golden eagles as well. Didn't really get to see much of them, but another reason to come back. Uh, there was also a couple things that I wanted to do that I never quite got round to, such as the Carsig Archies. Did go to Carsig, um, but when I got there, it was like a six hour walk and hadn't really planned it, especially this time of year. The lights, uh, it's getting darker earlier now. But yeah, it's, it's a reason to come back and I definitely will be back here. Um, yeah, Iona was nice, it's going across to, to Staffa as well. Staffa is a really incredible, inspiring island. Thanks for watching. If you want to see more, head over to my Instagram.